put a key on the floor, they have to pick it up. <laughs> and so, they're all insane, this whole fucking room, when you walk outside this door, where all the values are so mixed up, I know the most liberated people out there are caught up in a swamp. And so what's got to happen? I would say it'd be cheaper to build a wall around the same people instead of build mental institutions. There's so few of them, of course, so many. And here, they get along real well and let the outside go on. Now, what we really have to do is reorient people to a new way of thinking, where they stop looking for justice, and if they want a better world, they have to get up off their act and make it better, and learn what the processes are for doing so. Unfortunately, if uh, this system that I'm talking about were put on television with another person to debate, I would lose. Because the values of this are so complex, and the order of information is so different, and the things that the, the antagonist might bring out are common views to everybody, so they'll agree. In other words, if before the Wright brothers flew, if I got up and I said, have got a debate with John, why man can't fly, I would win. Because most people aren't that level. And John says, I believe a flying machine. You go, well, you're a crackpot. And so, if you get up and said, someday they'll communicate by wireless over great distances, you would lose the debate if you made the wireless. So, the majority, a democracy, is a nonsensical concept. Assuming that a great number of people can make a better decision than few, we never call my brother-in-law in when surgery is called for. He doesn't know a fucking thing about it. You call in different specialists, and they do all kinds of thermographs and x-rays, and they make a decision based on that. Not that medics can make the best decisions, but they can make better decisions than your grandma. And if you want flood control techniques, don't bring the American people in and have them vote on it. They don't know enough about the issues. Because they're not educated. All I'm suggesting is that the future schools will never permit anyone to become a musician or an engineer or a chemist. They'd be trained in multi-disciplines. They'd learn foreign affairs, different cultures. They'd learn how the Spanish families live, the Greek families. They'd learn about foods and customs all over the world. So you can visit with other parts of the world and not go to the American club. This guy lived in France 20 years at the American club. Doesn't know anything about France. See? So they will learn how to recognize the differences in culture, not saying they have funny customs. So when we raise the people of the future, they'll be multi-people, multi-disciplines, so they can understand many things. And they'll be smart enough to say, I don't know anything about what you're saying in that area. If he got up and he proposed something brand new, instead of saying that'll never happen, I would say, I don't know enough about electronics to know the validity of what you're saying. I can't evaluate, see? Another person says, I can make a new type of motor that looks like a ball but electrically can repel, propel a car by uh, inertial power system. The person says, I'm sorry, I don't know anything about physics or mechanics, and I, I, I don't understand. Can you describe it in layman's terms? If you came in with a new hairstyle, wax to a point like that, instead of saying, that's a funny hairstyle, say, I'm not accustomed to it. Perhaps I'm you know, entirely not it. You see? Suppose you shave your eyebrows so you got little spots like that. And I say, what's the function of that? You say, I like it. Well, I say, well, I'm not used to it. But I don't look at people and say, that's a funny thing they're doing. Because I remember when I was a kid and I went to the movies, they show cannibals, you know, with bones through their nose. And, and, and the people used to laugh in the movie theater. And they wore hats with cherries and pigeons on it and said this stuff. Ridiculous looking thing. You understand what I mean? They had beads that came all the way down to here, you know. And, and guys, big fat men, used to wear a gold chain and a watch bar when they laughed. They used to bounce all over the place. You know? And I would say that people are funny. They wore dresses with bathing suits with 10 million units on the legs like that. And you can hardly swim with these lousy canvas bags. And, and they wore ridiculous things. So everybody is ridiculous at a time in their life. And so there'll be no more value judgments. You'll never look at another person and say, what? I'd never say to you, what is that person like? You'll say, well, here's how they behave to me. You understand? But we go around and we think we can describe other people. Suppose your first boyfriend wrote a book about you. Then your second boyfriend. Then your mother wrote a book about what you're like. And then your father and your brother and your sister. They all be different books. So never read anything written by anybody about anybody. They're full of shit. Because no one can write a book about themselves. I'm inclined to be fair, open-minded, kind, good decision-making, alert. <laughs> and then you meet the pin and you're amazed. All right, so the idea is that people are not capable of writing about themselves because they have an investment. Their ego, they're involved. Now, here's the way you talk about people. When you say to me, what's Joe like? I says, he's, a, he's, he's been absolutely honest with me. He's an excellent mechanic. He knows very little about astronomy, very good at electronics. We're usually an hour late for appointments. 
And I said, is that what he's like? He said, I said, no, that's what he's like to me. To somebody else, maybe entirely different. We haven't even learned that yet. He's, well, let me tell you what you like, that goddamn two bit horror, you know. And then you go on and you tell what other people are like. And and say, well, it seems to me, or here's how they behave to me. Now, when you talk like that, and I say, well, let me tell you what my first first wife was like, that no good son of a bitch. Well, if you go to listen to that first wife about Euripides Sneak, you're going to get another story. And they're both full of shit, the fucking thing. And the lawyer is more full of shit than all of them, because he represents anybody that gets there. A lawyer never represents the truth, because they can't. They don't know enough about things to represent the truth. They don't have that much information. So if I say, if you get a conviction on her, you're in politically. So they, they try to do that. And so we've got no use for lawyers. A lawyer isn't a person that tries to find out. Maybe Clarence Dow, very few that live. Maybe, maybe Nader in some areas. But very few lawyers really are concerned they, they read books like Argument and Debate, how to win an argument, not how to find the truth. And you can't debate the truth. You can't get up and debate a new idea because the public, not being familiar with it, finds it too fantastic. For example, if I address a medical conference next year, there's a possibility of, of mechanisms that people swallow. And these little tiny mechanisms look like a beam. And by electronic control, the knife blade comes out. And they're moved magnetically. And surgery can be done inside without cutting into the body, without men. It can be done by electromanipulation. You type the nature of the surgery, and the machine takes over. Clean, it stitches, and does everything. The doctor say, but, 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 but what's going to happen to me? I said, what happened to the ice man? You never, before you bought the refrigerator, everybody's got a family. Get, you never give a shit about anybody but yourself. Someday there'll be mechanisms that are lawyers. And they'll handle the situation, not to win to find as much information as they can. So it's not not guilty or guilty. This is no such thing. Sometimes a person, if you get mad at somebody and pull the trigger and you miss, you're not a murderer. If a fly's on your nose and you happen to hit, you're now a murderer. Your friends don't associate with you anymore. If a girl pushes your little child off the stool and you push her, well, you think she did, and you push and she hits her head against a concrete and she's dead, you're now a murderer. You committed murder. What's a murder? Well, anybody that flies a plane and drops bombs and murder to me. All soldiers are assassins. So I don't use those labels. To me, there are no good people, no bad people, no bums, no great people, no Leonardo da Vinci's, no Michelangelo's. They're just people. And if Michelangelo and da Vinci were exposed to people who talked of gears and levers that you never heard about, they used to sit around and say, how do you think we can make a boat move? And some guy said, well, if you put up a sail like this, or you put a rocket charge here that the Chinese use, them. and da Vinci talked to a lot of people, you don't know where the hell he got his ideas. And here you have a book called Leonardo, the Great Man, as though he did it all by himself. In essence, I tell this story many times. The first chemist that mixed unusual substances together, he disappeared with the building. And his brother-in-law wrote, never mix that together. And we become smart by making mistakes. That all men and women build upon other men and women. And we learn serially from so many sources that there'll be no great men in the future. The Wright brothers will say, or Einstein will say, I came upon relativity by this method, I've read this book, that book, that man, and, and say, he always said this, I have been able to achieve what I have achieved because I stood on the shoulders of giants. You know what he means by that. And that goes for Bach, Brown, Beethoven. In their day, there were a lot of Bach-type musics. Lots of sound like Bach. And so even the Beatles, as they came along, they took early English music and they popularized it. But there's no such thing as total originality. Man is influenced by environment, by books, by people. And so someday, there will be no great man. There will be no monuments except to man. As the achiever or the unachiever, depending on his time and history. And in the future, there will be no memorials. There will be no Lincoln Memorial. There will be a Lincoln Memorial Library. If you put up no goddamn statuary in the park that does nothing, you'll put in automatic thermographic equipment in the Veterans Hospital in honor of General George Pershing. You know what I mean? But you don't put up a goddamn statue with a bunch of warriors on horses and a pigeon shit all over it and a traffic jam having to go around it. This shit, while people are hungry and uneducated, it'll go into the fund to enlighten people and books and libraries. We don't even know how to educate people. And they talk of education today in school. There's no education. There's robotization where they unify people into a common set, such a parallel set that they all say the same thing when they meet somebody they like. I love you.
And the guy says to the girl the same thing, grabs her hand and says, it's nice being with you. And he says, and it's nice being with you. And they hug each other, and they kiss each other nice when they rub noses. So, so they all do the same thing. We're gonna have, would you like to have dinner with me? Oh, would you like to go for a drive? Always the same shit. That's why there's nothing new. That's why we find that we forget one person, meet another person, and find that they're replaced very easily. Because they're not that different. But the world of the future would be quite different.